And welcome to BCSN Sports Flash. Greg Frankie with another edition in which we're going to be talking Whiteford Bobcat Volleyball. Today we have Janie Bung. We had her on earlier speaking with her longtime teammate Jess Bubach. This is not a teammate of her from Whiteford Bobcat Volleyball, but her mother Holly Bung, who was a great player herself at Whiteford and kind of an interesting situation with the uh, the mother watching the daughter and the daughter learning from the mother and so forth. Janie, you, you said when you were growing up, your, your mom coached all of your teams, and I'm sure that uh, you probably learned a lot from her. Yeah, I did. I learned everything I know pretty much from my mom. She's the reason why I'm so like in the sport. She's the reason why I work so hard. She pushed me and made me pretty much the athlete I am. Also with my coaches as well. Mm -hmm. Now the interesting question a lot of times with parents and they're really good athletes and then they have kids and a lot of them are maybe concerned that they don't want to feel like they're pushing their kids to do what they did to do something that they really want to do. Did you ever have that sense with Janie that you didn't want to to kind of make her feel like because you were into sports that she had to be into sports or did she just take to it like that and you didn't even have to think about that? Well, when she was younger, she actually was a cheerleader, which would go against everything that I did in sports. So I did let her cheer and she did get to choose. You know, we couldn't do everything and she had to choose between cheerleading and sports and she did choose sports. But she is the youngest of five and her four brothers all were in sports, so I just think she kind of went that way. But she she did horse riding too, and tried that. And but I do I do think I had so much fun playing sports when I was younger, and I really I thought it was a really good thing for our kids, whether it was sports or debate team or whatever they did, just doing something to be active, I think is really, really important for, for all kids. So what was it that made you decide to give up cheerleading and pursue competitive athletics? Was it the influence of your brothers and your mom, or was it just something that you decided you wanted to do? What do you, what do you recall that led you to that? Well, I had people that were like my idols, kind of, and my brothers have always been very into sports and they've always worked really hard and they like went to everything they could my brothers never missed anything and I always went to their games and just seeing them and work so hard and getting awards and just being great role models for me that's kind of pretty much why I chose sports and cheerleading was more just for fun I did it with my friends but sports volleyball in particular has always been what I loved. Can you still do all the gymnastics stuff that you have to do with cheerleading? I do every once in a while, pull out the backflips just to make sure I can still do them. But and maybe you can do, figure out a way to use that on the volleyball floor I mean, and <laughs> confuse the other team and still make the play or whatever. But, uh, but certainly that, that might just cross over. Now, when you watch Janie out playing now and compare it to the volleyball that you played, by the way, a longtime colleague of ours, Renee Reitz at Buckeye, was a teammate of yours, and she's the one, in fact, who called my attention to the, uh, the mother-daughter connection here. But what is the volleyball like that you see Janie playing today compared to what the volleyball was when you were playing, and you, you also uh, had very good, successful teams at Whiteford? We actually did have a, a good team. We had the same coach for four years, and we ended up going to the state quarterfinals in Battle Which Creek. Which the same thing that they did. Yes, and um, we did lose to a, a very good team, and we were ahead the two games and ended up losing. Then the games were to 15, so we were ahead 13-3 to three and lost in our one of our first games. So, so she had an experience sort of like you had. We yes. talked earlier about a game that looked like you were going to win and you did Exactly. So and did you tell her anything after they lost their disappointing game about, oh, well, I've been through this too? In my lifetime, we've had two serious loss, and she has the same coach that I had for softball. And if you'd ask Mrs. Hubbard today, she would say it was her worst loss. We were ranked second in state, and we lost to a team that was very poor. We, we just didn't play well, and the team that won the state, we had beaten. So we had a bad softball loss, and we had a bad volleyball loss in my senior year. So we had a really athletic class. Yeah. Well, I guess everybody has to go through those <laughs> kind of things. But they didn't have rally scoring back when you right. played, so it was a totally different game. It really was. The, the game was different in that there wasn't rally scoring. It's much more exciting with rally scoring, and that serving is so, so important. Um, and it seems to me there, there, there was, there's way more blocking and dominant hitting than, than when we played. But we did have a good team, and, and we did hit. We did have you know center hitters, and we there were short sets. They, there's more now than them, but we, were, we, we, we could compete. Yeah. So have you ever seen any home movies of your mom playing back in her glory days? Have you, have never, you seen her in action? 
I've never seen any videos, but I do have a bunch of newspaper articles that I've looked through over the years. She, I wouldn't call them glory years. <laughs> she does have a lot of um, a lot of newspaper articles that I've read through when I was younger, and that also I had a goal of, you know, being more like my mom. And everybody says to me, "You're Holly Schmidt's daughter." I'm like, yeah. So I have I had a lot to live up to, but I mean, I had great role models. Yeah. So you say they weren't glory years, but I came to cover one of her basketball games. I saw the name Holly Bung in the record book many, many times in the Whiteford Annals. So I'd say Not there many, was some maybe of that. a couple. Yeah. Now, if your team back from those days could be morphed into the present and play Janie's team, our how do you think the game would go? Our basketball team would have killed them. <laughs> um, volleyball, I think we'd have given them a run for our money. We were very good. We had a couple of tall girls, and I am going to credit our team to our coach. We had a coach um, named Carol Wozinski and she was a young girl then and came, actually she was my sister's age and she came right out of college and coached us and she coached us like a college team. I mean there was, we were in shape and we were good because of her. So we did not have, you know, massive heights. She made us good and we went, you know, we went far because of her. Over the years when you've been playing volleyball, have you asked your mom about her experiences or if you're having some troubles or issues on the floor have you gone to her for advice and that sort of thing or you try to just kind of work through it on your own i mean there's never a game where i don't get an earful after <laughs> from her dad. whether you ask or not, not right? from my dad <laughs> from her dad no. i i have learned a lot from my mom like pretty much everything but i'm not i'm very grateful for it mm -hmm. what was it like when you were on a team and I can ask both of you this, but did you feel that your mom sort of was harder on you just so that everybody knew that there was no favoritism there? Or did she always. treat you just like everybody else? How did it feel to you? Always harder on me. And I always had my brothers as like our basketball refs and I'd follow every single game. And there was always a fight afterwards, me and my brothers, and they would always call every follow on me and I would get so mad. So I felt like I was always getting picked on by my mom and my brother. <laughs> did you feel that way? No, no, but she did have a couple times, just a few times where our boys were roughing and it's like, this is not a good thing. We should not have them roughing because they did the opposite. They just they watched were like, me, they only watched me. Right, <laughs> it kind of did, but that was just way for wreck and that, that was good character building. Mm -hmm. But were you conscious as a coach and not letting the other people think that she was your daughter, so that's why she was starting and that kind of stuff? Mm, I, I tried not to think about it. I tried to, um, I really coached because somebody has to do it. You know, the only teams that are really good is the girls that start young and the boys that start young. I also coached a lot of my boys' teams, and so did my husband. If you take these kids and you go out and you compete at a young age, they're bound to be better. They play together, they have fun together, you go out to eat after the games, the camaraderie, it makes your high school experience wonderful. Nothing's more fun than that team camaraderie and you get that when you play together. Well, anybody who's seen Janie play would know that it's not any other reason than her athletic ability why she'd be in the starting lineup, that's for sure. And it's been a great pleasure watching you in, as a Whiteford, not only volleyball, but also basketball and softball player. And, Pleasure to have uh, both generations of great Bung athletes in here today. So thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. We thank BCSN. Our pleasure. And Greg Frankie saying so long. Another edition of BCSN Sports Flash.